Welcome to the talk show, Life Stories with Mark Hoberman. The goal of this show is to provide a learning experience to people of all ages, with guests from various fields in academics, a wide range of industries, and insight into the many forms of art, athletics, and entertainment. We hope you enjoy the show. Motivational speaker and business consultant, Sarah Victory is today's guest. Sarah will talk about her experiences in business and helping large companies increase their profits and productivity. Sarah Victory, welcome to Life Stories with Mark Hoberman. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. It's always nice to spend time with you. Oh, it's great to see you as always. Sarah, I just want to get into earlier years, maybe 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. Tell us a little about before all this big Sarah Victory stuff happened that we're going to talk about. Um, the first thing that pops into my mind is, I think one of the things that inspired me most was something that happened to me when I lived in California. I was living in California. I was uh, still single, hadn't met the handsome husband uh, who gave me the great last name. Uh, but I was so I went to this party and uh, I was wearing like the off the shoulder dress and looking all fancy and everything. And I stayed out really late, like two, three, two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. And then I'm driving home down the Pacific Coast Highway and I can smell the sea and that, you know, that wonderful scent of the sea that you, that you it's just the, the most amazing thing. And it's a warm night because it's California. It's always a warm night. And so and I'm going down the highway and I'm singing badly to the radio and having a grand time. And as I get as I get up to my house, uh, I think I'm not going to bother going into the garage because it's a beautiful night in the middle of the night. It's beautiful. So I go to park. And as I go to park, I sent something off to my right coming out of the bushes. Okay. And in that moment, I knew something was wrong. I didn't know what. And all of a sudden, I see this figure in a big coat coming mm -hmm right up to the car and he's got a hand in his pocket and he says, excuse me, ma'am, but I need you to take me to Anaheim. Wow. And my first thought, yeah, my first thought wasn't I'm going to die or um, where the heck is Anaheim from here? My first thought was he called me ma'am. Called me ma'am. It's like, that's so strange. And I and I thought, well, I really don't like being called ma'am. No woman does, really. It makes you feel like you're a thousand years old. And um, but I thought it's sort of like weirdly polite. It's like the strangest thing. So I thought now is perhaps not the time to discuss with my dislike of the people calling me ma'am. It was just so weird. Well, meanwhile, I'd left the windows open because I'm, you know, driving driving along and, and not singing and everything. And all of a sudden, within four seconds, this guy has bolted around the side of the car, opened up the door, and is sitting next to me. And I don't want to look at him because I'm terrified and I could feel my heart is pounding out of my chest. So I didn't do anything you're supposed to do, you know, scream or 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 drive the car or I, I just all I did was, go, OK, I guess I'll drive. So I turned the car on and I start driving toward where I think Anaheim is. <laughs> so I'm driving along the highway out there, freeways, we call them California, and we're driving along. And finally, I realized that the guy hasn't said anything in a while and I'm going to have to ask him, where are we going? And I, I just, this is like the strangest night. It's like a, something out of a nightmare. So I look over him slowly and I see this guy's about 15 years old. He's got his hands out of his pocket. So there's no gun and he's sobbing. I mean, sobbing uncontrollably. And I said, are you okay? which I know sounds terribly codependent, but I just didn't know what else to do with the kid. And he just like wipes his face a little bit. And he says, I can't do anything right. I can't even hold you upright. I'm a failure. And I went, oh, no, no, no. I was very scared. You were really scary. You were very. And I'm like, once a motivational speaker, always a motivational. Right. I couldn't help him. It's like the poor kid. I'm like, I have to boost him up somehow, even on that. And so I see the crack of a smile. <laughs> He's, he's like, yeah, 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 okay, sure. And I said, why don't you tell me what's going on and why we're going to Anaheim exactly? <laughs> and there's some nice parts of Anaheim and there were, at the time. There were some sort of sketchy parts of Anaheim, and I didn't know why we were going to Anaheim. And he tells me the story uh, that just kind of broke my heart. He'd been in and out of foster care, and um, finally he got to go home to his family that day. 
And he was so excited. He was so excited to be able to be with his own, very own real family, his biological family. So he's he walks in the door. He's so excited. And he doesn't realize that in the next room, the living area, there's a meth lab. There's a meth lab in the living room of this house after he gets dropped off by the social workers. So that evening, like two hours later, he's like, "Why? what's going on? Why is this happening? Why are we going to get caught? FBI raid comes in. They read the place. And he, his parents say, run, right? And he crawls out the bathroom window. It's about this big and goes running as fast as he can, as far as he can. And he runs until he can't breathe anymore. And then he starts to walk and then walk. And then he sits for a while and walks more until it's 2.30 in the morning. And he sees me and he thinks, I the only people I know in the whole state that might put me up for the night are in Anaheim. I need to get there. Not a lot of public transportation in Southern California, at least that part of it, not at that hour anyway. And so he's like, I need a car. And he sees me drive up and he thinks she has a car. I could take her car and drive there. And he goes, but I'm 15. I don't have a driver's license and I don't know how to drive. A certain amount of logic going on here. <laughs> and then he, he says, so he thinks, I know, I'll, I will just carjack her and get her to drive me to Anaheim. And I said, how are you feeling about that choice right now? <laughs> he starts to kind of like laugh, cry. Mm -hmm. and says, not really very good. I said, good. Let's not do this again. Okay. <laughs> He's like, okay. And I said, so let me get this straight. There's a meth lab in their house. I said, huh, okay. I didn't have the easiest childhood either. And a lot of people are really surprised by that because, yeah, you drive a nice car. I said, I do drive a nice car. I said, I get to travel over the world, all over the world doing things I never dreamt I'd get to do when I was your age. And I said, but I'm living proof. You can make any kind of life that you want. So if we could do magic and sprinkle fairy dust all over you, what would you want? Because I don't think we can count on the parents here. So they're making their own choices. You're going to have to make your own as well. What would you want? I just treated him like he was a a, a 35 year old client. <laughs> you know, he's just, Absolutely. and I said, what would you, what, if we could do magic, what would you want in like five years, two years, whatever, when you get out of high school, what would you want? And he's like, oh, I would, I would work on old motorcycles, like really, really old fancy ones. I would work on old cars. I would make them cherry, which he had explained to me is not a fruit. And I was like, Great. That's amazing. I said, well, how would you go about something like this? He goes, well, there's special schools you can get into that will help teach you trades like this. And he goes, I know one. And there's this social worker and she really likes me. So I think she might help me get, you know, get into this school. We, I need special housing, though. And there's a way to get that. But I don't know what it is. So now he's got this whole plan. And right. I just watch this. I'm just watching this go. And I said, Wow, that sounds great. What would your first step be? He goes, well, on Monday, I would have to, he's got you know, all mapped out. I have to call her and I'd have to do this and I'd have to do that. I said, that sounds fantastic. And so we we get to this neighborhood, really sketchy neighborhood. And I said, are you sure you're going to be okay? Do you, do we, can I take you somewhere else? He goes, no, no, I, I, I can't handle social workers tonight. I promise I'll call on Monday. I was like, okay, you promise. I said, I really feel like I probably should be taking you somewhere else. Because no, because they're they're you know my fan they're you know older family members. They will take care of me. I'm going to be okay. I said, you're sure? Yeah, I'm sure. He goes, but it's not a great neighborhood. So I'm going to watch you drive away. Yes, yeah, this is not a great neighborhood. I'm going to watch you get into that house and wave at me before right. I leave. So now we're like best friends. And so he he gets and so as he's getting out of the car, he grabs my card between the, you know, between the two seats, it happens to be some card sitting there. He grabs one and he sticks it in his pocket. I didn't say anything. And he said, uh, you know, ma'am. And I was like, oh, you know, you can call me Sarah, really. Sarah's my name. And I'm, I'm you feel free, <laughs> feel free to call me Sarah. He goes, oh, okay. And he goes, well, uh, I'm Ricky. And I said, oh, well, Ricky, now I know your name. How lovely. And he said, um, you know, I'm 15 years old and you're, like the first person who ever believed in me and I tried to steal your car. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I don't know why, but I really do believe in you. I think you have a good heart. I think you're doing the best you could in a terrible situation. And I, I believe there's nothing you can't do. I really do. Wow. So he gets out of the car, gives me a quick hug <laughs> before he gets out. Of the, he hops out, goes all the way up there, waves at me, goes inside, waves again. I'm waving at him. I'm driving back home and I'm thinking, this is my world. Okay. Wow. This is extraordinary. Like, I cannot believe that this happened to me. 
So then about three weeks later, I realized I have no way to get a hold of him to find out. I couldn't remember where, I don't know where the heck I was. It was the middle of the night. And so I'm going through the Cincinnati airport. I've got my, you know, Bluetooth in and my assistant, Pamela, uh, calls me and she says, hey, we got a call. We got a call from somebody. He sounds really young. Mm. And I said, really? And she goes, yeah, no, he sounds really young. I said, oh, okay. What did he say? Well, his name's Ricky. And I went, oh, what did he say? She goes, well, he has some news for you. He wants you to know he's gotten into a special school. He's working on old cars and old motorcycles and making them cherry. And and uh, you know what that means? I'm like I do. I'm I'm very cool. I know exactly <laughs> what that means. Uh, and uh, he's yeah, he's got special housing. He's really happy, and he wants you to know one more thing. I said, wow, what 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 else does he want me to know? He wants you to know that he's discovered the secret of life. Ooh. He's discovered the secret of life. What is the secret of life? He says it's you have to do something brave every day. Mm. I said, did you say he, he said you have to do something brave every day? She said, yeah. I said, that's the best advice I've ever gotten in my life. Yeah. That's the most inspiring thing I think I've ever heard from somebody who shouldn't be able to be that inspiring. We shouldn't be able to be that optimistic. We shouldn't be able to have that kind of self-awareness. Well, the stars were aligned. I don't want to say this. He chose to uh, carjack the right person. For lack of better term. <laughs> I mean, it sounds eerily. Well, like and I think more for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I, I, I really think and I think to this day, he changed the trajectory of my life because I always say, you know, he could get up and do my speeches for me. That is the most beautiful thing that you could say. And I did, you know, I didn't have the easiest time of it as a as a kid, and have had to overcome a lot. Like like all of us, everybody has something. Nobody gets through life unscathed. But there are times when I think, can I do this next thing? Can I speak to ten thousand people in South America, you know, yeah. with Stephen Covey? You know, can I do that? You know, will I die <laughs> if I do that? And I hear him in the back. He's my coach now. He's the one saying to me. Just do something brave every day. That's all it takes. Well, not stupid, not crazy, but brave. And I really believe that the the leap that has happened in my career, the ability that I have now to work with the amazing human beings that I am gifted with the pleasure of working with and do the things that we do really comes down to the fact that he he was brave enough to share with me that we all need to do something brave every day and that he was willing to do that. I don't have his phone number. People always ask me all the time, you know, does he ever get haul you back? Did you have a, she, she, Pam asked several times. He didn't give it. I always think maybe if I tell the story enough, somebody knows him and they can tell me he's living a great life. Uh, but, um, but it really did change the trajectory of, of my life. I was so scared to do the bigger things. And I was really, I was really, wanting to stay small and i i that changed everything for me well let's really talk did. about let's talk about the bigger things and it's so great that i you believe and from the story i'm hearing this did enable you to do the bigger things sooner yeah. if at all so i know your tag yeah if at all yeah i know your tagline is doubling your business for companies so how is that yeah. done people think it's all a money thing in that and it's more of a philosophy you're training you're speaking and certainly you're consulting so how is that done doubling your business yeah i mean i have a, a program i've done three thousand times in front of three and a half million participants now called double your business in one year or less and our and our tagline is double your business double your impact and change the world because i think that they're all i i know you believe this too they're all connected aren't they that's all those three things are connected. It's not just double your business, make more money, though I can grow anything except a house plant. Mm -hmm. Those are fake. Um, but it's also what kind of impact are you having uh, on your on your, you know, on your customers, on your clients, on on the people that work with you and for you um, and on the community that surrounds you and, and on the world. So it really comes down to there's always a way to double a business. There's always a way to grow a business. Sometimes you have to fix the infrastructure below it, or a couple of times I've nearly imploded a company because I'm so good at growing stuff and our team is so good at, good at, growing, at growing stuff. We now have to look at the infrastructure and say, can they handle doubling in less than a year? And not every business can be doubled in, in less than a year. I mean, the reason that I'm in Europe, as you know, I'm on this, this 
you know, crazy tour of Europe right now doing uh, th- these great big projects with a company out of England um, is because of, of, of that is, you know, is uh, because that they, you know, they really wanted to double, uh, but they also needed to have the infrastructure. They needed overseas staff. They needed, you know, a fractional HR, a fractional uh, COO. Uh, they needed all of that stuff. So sometimes it's a matter of getting infrastructure ready so that you can grow. Uh, and then other times there's always a way to double it. But in their case, I said to them, there's 75 million, there's $75 million a year. A year. I mean, th- that company, I couldn't do that in a year. Um, they, would be, they said they'd be happy if we did it in five Five years and we did it in two years and two months and I was counting uh we went from what 75 million to 156 million in American dollars so that you know so it's there's always a way to do it um it's just it takes not just like I'm so smart and I come in and, and come up with all these brilliant ideas I mean I obviously I am smart and I do come up with cool ideas from all these different places and all these hundreds of different clients that I've had and that we've had as a, as a company but it's also it's usually within that company itself they know how they need to double mm-hmm. so as much as I would like to say it's all how fabulous I am, that would be an absolute bald faced lie. <laughs> it's because I said to this gal, she's and she's beautiful, tall, she's a gazelle and with a British accent. I mean, she's just a beautiful human being inside and out. And I said, okay, well, good consultant question. Um, if you were, if you were to talk, you know, how do you think you need to double this business? What do you think it would take to double this in five years? Right. And she goes, yeah, if we did it in five years, she said, I'd be thrilled. And I said, well, I'd be thrilled for you. Um, and I said, well, I bet, I bet, you know, what would it take? Because they had, they had only gotten to 75 million by acquiring other companies. They had no sales staff and no sales strategy, except write emails to people in various companies saying how great they were. And surprisingly, that wasn't going well. Um, But I I said, okay, what would you need to do? And she said, I know we need to get into Coke. We need to get into Pepsi. We need to get into Quaker. We get into those three. And she said, within a month, we'd be at twice what we are right now. We just need to get into those three. And I said, well, why don't we just do that then? And she's like, oh, no, we've tried this one. They Velcro their wrist to their forehead for like an hour and tell you we've tried this and we've tried that. And, the, you know, but it's like 42 strategies that all amount to writing to three companies and telling them how great you are a thousand times a day. And that just isn't always a strategy that is going is going to work. We had to make them more visible in the marketplace so that those three companies would come to her. They would come to their company and we could do lead generation in a whole, in a whole other way. And she did have some connections to those three companies, just wasn't leveraging them. So sometimes it's just out having that outside perspective. But we got into Coke in eight months, we got into Pepsi in uh, here in three months, I, I think, and then two years and two months got into Quaker and she went to 100 and 156 million um, with a, yeah, in, in four or five weeks after that. And we had made sure that he had the infrastructure, brought them in some overseas people, brought them in some fractional people uh, as needed people, you know, where if they did get a big boom in business, they were ready, but if they didn't, they would disappear. So we had it structured in a way that would really, that would really allow for that because everybody says, yes, I want to double. Yes, I want to double, but they don't think, what kind of impact is that going to have on your customers and your clients? Or, you know, are you still going to be able to provide the same level of service to everybody? Is Are there systems and processes to handle that? And then, you know, are you still going to be having that positive impact on, on the world that you that you want? And are you thinking about all of those things? And so that's that's what makes a huge that makes a huge impact with doubling your business. But there's always an answer. There's usually a dozen ways. Seriously, there's usually a dozen ways to double any company. It's just then picking the very best strategy and trying that one. And then and then maybe trying two or three at the same time to see which one really takes off the best. Well, so so that's inspiring people in business. That's uh, mm-hmm. different ideas, different thoughts. But look, you inspired the young man who carjacked you. You inspired Ricky. people. Yeah, he has Ricky in business. Ricky. Uh, but I also- try. Yes, you use the word really hard. Yes, you you uh, use the word inspiring a lot. So, what made you create the Inspiring Victory Show? 
Uh, the Inspiring Victory Show. Uh, you know, people had been saying, you know, have a show, have a show, have a show for a long time. Uh, we got approached to do uh, a television show years ago, and uh, I was it just wasn't really feasible because of my travel schedule and the things that we had going on. Could not, uh, couldn't quite make that work. But in the back of my head, I kept thinking. This is something that would make would make sense. I know s extraordinary people. You've been on the Inspiring Victory Show, and you're brilliant on it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I know all these amazing people. I've spent 30 years collecting all these geniuses that I that I'm lucky enough to know, call my friends, and learn from every day. And I thought, I think if I were getting getting started, or even even right now at the level, you know, the business at this particular level, learning from all of those great minds would be an extraordinary thing you know what what an amazing thing to be able to learn from people who have doubled their own business or have have made that kind of impact on the world or people who have who are these inspiring ceos and presidents of associations and companies you know, businesses anywhere from five to 50 million or maybe 100 million depending upon who i'm talking to um you know they're in that space where they're not mark zuckerberg where they, where it's so huge it doesn't necessarily relate to medium sized businesses but they they've been there they've done that they've made the mistakes that you know you we don't want to have to make all the mistakes ourselves we want to learn from the mistakes of others and it is so lovely to hear what works for other people i i just love it because i learned from you and i learned from all these other great people uh, and we again, you know, we have Sherry Wynn, our two-time Olympian. She was on. She's she's very inspiring. Um, but I wanted it to be a place where people, a gathering place for the, the Inspiring Victory Tribe. And I wanted it to be a place where you could learn how to double your business and also how to inspire others and also how to make that impact, um, a positive impact on the world. And uh, I think that's, you know, how do you how do you make money in a way that is ethical and moral and, and uh, really creates tremendous value in, in the world and give back? And and I know so many people like that, and uh, so it's been sh shocking and surprising to me that they've all been more than willing to to show up and share their insights about climbing Mount Everest or about having you know a billion dollar company and what they had to do with it and and how they had to had to uh, navigate those waters, how to bring out the best in other people, and uh, those are things that fascinate me, and those are people that I admire. So uh, getting to talk to them has been been a real thrill. And, and you had some wonderful insights that I have kept in my head ever since. Well, I, I appreciate that. I love it's great being on your show. I love what you do. So just quickly, I have about a minute left, Sarah. What is next? I'm afraid <laughs> to ask this question. It could be an hour answer. What is next for Sarah Victory? You know how lazy you are <laughs> yeah. and you never have any new ideas. So uh, yeah, we just, yeah, this, so what is it's, next? it's What's next for you. It's so true. Well, we've added a couple of divisions to the company where we're bringing in overseas talent because that's been such a great impact for us. Finding wonderful people that really deserve a chance uh, has been, is really powerful. So we have a gal that had that background, asked if she could be an entrepreneur within the company. So we've added that. Uh, and also we have a creative department for doing podcasts and, and websites and social media for, for other people. Um, I just, I got some great people from overseas uh, in the Philippines. These, they're beautiful people. People with that lovely language uh, and they all speak English, which has been very helpful because I don't speak any of the Filipino languages. And it's just been it's been a miracle um, for, for me and for our business and get to work with them and um, and to see the kind of impact it can have on them and their future because of the lack of opportunity over there. Uh, we're just lucky to get them. And I think other people would be lucky, lucky as well. So that's that's our, our next that's our next uh, next advancement is trying to help people in that way. I'm sure you, you only know one speed, and that's full speed ahead. So, Sarah Victory. Unfortunately. Yes. Thank, you for being, <laughs> thank you for being today's guest and sharing your very impactful oh, journey you. with us. Special thank you for enhancing thank the you. lives of business people and others, but all over the globe. Uh, I have to also say to the viewers watching, I hope Sarah's journey has shown you that following your passion and helping others is essential mm -hmm. in life. Remember, you have the power to make positive change, as Sarah, Sarah has said, uh, in your own life as well as the lives of others. So we love to hear from you. Stay connected with us on social media. We're on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, X, formerly Twitter, and LinkedIn. Don't forget to like us and follow us for the latest episodes and exciting new content. Sarah, Victory, thanks again for joining us today. Thank you so much, Mark. It's always just an honor to spend time with you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having me on. Thank you for watching Life Stories with Mark Hoberman. 
To contact Mark, email him at info at lifestorieswithmarkhoberman.com or visit him on social media through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn. Thank you for watching Life Stories with Mark Hoberman.